several days into our South Florida trip, we have been working 25 missing persons cases that are missing with vehicles. It's right where you, it's right where you thought Gonzalo, he was. Gonzalo, you're not gonna believe it, Gonzalo. Guess where we are? We've discovered nine vehicles underwater. They're coming, I hear them go. This vehicle behind me just came out as we found it, completely sealed up. We're gonna have to notify authorities immediately. This is one episode you are not gonna wanna miss. Pulling up the Superior Towing right now. I'm super excited. I can already tell by their facility, they're uh, no joke. Having towing companies is critical. As you guys know, this is my background. I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for the towing industry. You know, three years ago, I was sitting in a tow truck, and now I'm traveling the nation, helping law enforcement agencies and families find hope. And that's deep. And I love it. I'm very passionate about it. We're going to showcase these companies that are helping us. We're going to tell their story because they play a pivotal role in what I'm doing and what I've been doing. What's up, buddy? How's everything? Good, good, good. Good morning. My name is DJ with Guardian Fleet Services. Um, I'm the terminal manager of Ace Superior Towing in Coffs, Miami. The shop. This is what we call home every day. Wow, look at that. I'm dedicated to all my employees, dedicated to uh, customers and uh, we really dedicate ourselves to try to be the best that we have and the best we can be. After the Karen Moore case, we were so heavily involved with, uh, with that, with the Davie Police Department, you know, is when uh, Doug and I started to connect and talk and um, led us to where we are today. And to have somebody such as yourself helping me, assisting me, giving Absolutely. me the backbone to be able to do it efficiently and effectively if and when we need to do a recovery, it's critical. So hopefully we can do some really cool stuff. Absolutely over the next few days and team up on uh, on something. Who knows? Who knows? We, there's a lot of work. Gone without a trace. It's been nearly four years since a Fort Lauderdale man disappeared. And tonight, his mother is making an emotional plea to help solve this mystery. Stephen McCrell was last seen at, at a Pompano Beach gas station in the early morning of July 30th, 2015. But where he went after that remains a mystery all these years later. Stephen McCrell was a father to his daughter, Skyler, a son, a boyfriend, a brother, a man who had many people who loved him. The last place he was seen was at this gas station at Sample and Dixie Highway in Pompano Beach in the early morning hours of July 30th of 2015. Dream sometimes that uh, he's coming home. He's knocking at the door and I'm going to open the door and he's there. And, and I just hope those dreams will come through. I'm still looking for him. So right now we're working on the Florida Turnpike. We're clearing accident locations in the Stephen McCrell case based upon the theory his vehicle made it southbound onto the turnpike off of Sample Road heading back to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. This is and in the previous case searches that we've all done, yeah. Mike, Ken, Allison, me, uh, we've ruled the turnpike out as a possibility because his uh, sun pass sun was not red getting onto the turnpike. But maybe his pass wasn't working or maybe his vehicle was going too fast because we know he was being chased. So we're gonna throw the bobber in right now to see how deep it if is. If he took the turnpike, he would have driven right past here. 19 feet. 19 feet? 19 feet. Nice. 18.6, 19. Nice. What color was his vehicle, white? It's a, it's a white Ford Fusion. White Ford Fusion. Gotta check it. Mike and I right now, are we're on the turnpike and uh, we just hopped into this pond. Uh, Mike and I have just found a vehicle about 19 feet deep on this roundabout in a turnpike in the area of where Stephen McCrell would have been and possibly several more cases. We're about to put a camera down on it right now. Just drop the magnet so we can actually stay on it, dude. Yeah. Okay. Toss it right off your side right now, straight down okay. by the transducer. Go ahead. Go ahead. It hasn't been there long. It's it's completely sitting on its roof. Whew. See that? If you look straight ahead where I'm focusing the camera right now, if he comes off that on ramp and he hits that embankment, he could have gone airborne yeah, into yeah. this pond. So we have a camera down right now. We're trying to identify the vehicle. All right, there's your magnet. Yeah, and we're just gonna have to get lucky. I'm gonna have to keep bouncing it around so we can see the size. It's, it's warm here, so growth and yeah. stuff like that is, is normal. It's the wheel, right? Is that the wheel, no? No, it's all growth. It's all growth. It's covered in growth, dude. I think, I don't think we're gonna be doing it, but the camera does it. Yeah. We gotta yeah. dive it. We're calling the other guys that we have in other areas searching right now just to let them know of our situation. Hey, Gonzalo, who are you with? Yeah. Who are you with? Everybody. Get everybody together, get to the turnpike immediately. I think we got them. Hey, come here, I wanna... 
What's the license plate number? WJ701. 701. Hey, the car is so covered in chrome, can't even tell what color it is, dude. Be safe, guys. They're coming. I hear them go. What is it? It's a Honda Accord. It's a Honda. Okay. It's a dark colored Honda. I didn't look inside it. It's not the matching license plate. It's very dirty. Let's see what that plate is. That car is not there for the, for good reason. No, it's not. Let me go back down. Stolen car dump situation. You're not going to dump a car here on the side of Florida Turnpike. Ready? Hold on. Yeah. Dark blue or black Honda. Nothing on our list. All the windows are up and the plates are on the car. That's not good. Here in Florida, the dive teams are really good when they know where there's a car. They'll open up the vehicle, they'll check it, they'll clear it. It doesn't appear that that has been done on this. So we're gonna have to notify authorities. My name is Doug Bishop. I'm with the United Search Corps, a uh, specialized search team for missing persons. I've located a vehicle in the pond 20 feet deep. It's all sealed up. Uh, and we're pretty concerned that uh, it might have an occupant inside of it. Can you tell what kind of vehicle it is? Look like a truck, car, upside uh, down or anything? It, it is a sedan, upside down, approximately 20 feet deep. It is a blue Honda. Our divers just dove to identify the vehicle, but due to the vehicle being sealed up and still having a license plate on it, um, obviously that's a pretty big deal. Okay. So in that process, anytime we discover a vehicle and it's sealed up, uh, obviously due to the growth and everything, like we're not gonna be able to determine what's inside of it unless we enter the vehicles. And entering the vehicle in this scenario, you run the risk of jeopardizing the integrity of the evidence. So therefore, that's why we immediately notify authorities. They said they're on their way, Florida Highway Patrol. Where we're at right now in the investigation, uh, Trooper Lopez has just showed up with Florida Highway Patrol. Uh, we're gonna go over the who, what, when, where, and what led us to this situation today. Broward County Sheriff's Office dive team will be out here, and they're gonna make entry to the vehicle to determine uh, what is or is not inside of the vehicle. Uh, then we'll have my buddy Daniel out here from Superior Towing. They're actually uh, do all the towing for Highway Patrol. All right, show me what we got, Fetty. So we got these, or we got, or we got these. Whatever one you prefer. I like the idea of this. It's going to be similar rating. Yeah. And it's just tough. So. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, man. No I know problem. you guys are an awesome company. For those of you who do not know, a Superior. AKA Guardian is the largest uh, towing company in Florida. They have some of the biggest rotators that are made. So those are some uh, really, really big tow trucks uh, that in most places in America are pretty much illegal to even have on the street, but because of the uh, requirement and what they're able to do, they're needed. So in this scenario, are you gonna use cribbing or are you just gonna put them down? Yeah. What cribbing is, it's basically extra foundation that is going to distribute the weight of these arms that's coming out right here so that it doesn't sink right here. After talking with the troopers, we have determined that they trust our capability in recovering this vehicle and the integrity of the contents inside of it. You guys good with that? Let's do it. All right. So what kind of rims are on it? Factory. Uh, it's the factory rims. They got holes in them. Are uh, the spokes? Oh, no. It's a little tiny. tiny I think we should holes. get the control Okay. Tiny. So try to go around the whole A-frame. You know, you're basically making a basket yep. under the control yep. arms, bringing that together. So what's the game plan on pulling it? The back end is up and the front end is kind of down in the dirt. And the back end is connected to this line. So my plan is I'm going to winch them both up a little bit. And then I'm going to winch more with this line yeah. to try to turn it a little bit. And yeah. since this end of the car is going to be up off the ground, to yeah. try to just slide it up, uh, more or less okay. just slide it up on the roof. Okay. All right, so uh, vehicle's upside down, nose in the silt back ends up about three feet off the deck. I can get to the back window. All the windows have dark tint. The plastic has gone milky, so can't see through it. Okay. On the passenger side, rear window, I've got an imprint, kind of like if you bump your body up against a shower door, mm. something flat. So it's not like a cushion or anything, it's something flat up against there. Okay. Given given how old the case is, yeah, I would yeah, assume yeah. that's fine, right. but it could be clothing or yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. So okay. um, everything is enclosed. Hopefully nothing gets damaged on the way up. Yeah could not see whether or not there was a face, you know, an impact in the front glass, because it's it's under. Mm -hmm. So all four are rigged. We got the far cable to the rear, the near cable to us, the fronts, basketed around the arms and all that. We, we stayed away from the rims because they're small those. Okay. What are you thinking? What are your thoughts right now? It's close. It's right there. 
and then they surface in a little bit. As you can see, the vehicle's coming out behind us. We do not know at this moment what's inside of the vehicle, but one thing we know is it wouldn't be possible without you, so please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. This is a collaborative effort. We also have Superior towing here with their 50-ton rotator. Thank you, Daniel, with Guardian, Florida Highway Patrol. Their main concern was protecting the integrity of the evidence inside of this vehicle. Um, they took into account our specialized services in doing this and doing this all the time. And as you see, we have recovered this vehicle flawlessly. Kids school bag. Yeah. Clay. Smell good? It might rip. It might be so dry, Rob. Oh, he got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, binder. Man, that's somebody's homework. Yeah. It's a little late now. 28 years late. It's like opening a time capsule. Elite meeting guide for meeting planner. Huh. Ignition's busted out. That's indicative of the vehicle being stolen. Seatbelt is in the unengaged position. That's one of the ones that go up and over on the slide out, the up and down the window, old door, old school. It's amazing how they got out. You check on that signal for northbound entrance at 836, gray Toyota, and a gray. All four doors are locked. All four doors are locked? Yeah, right open right here. Yeah, let me see that thing. That's unbelievable. All right, we got the car out of the water, Sergeant. What did you think about today? I learned a lot. It was a pleasure working with you and your team. The professionalism, the closeness, the respect you had for the scene, because we didn't know if there was going to be a body in there or not. But with everything that was done, you promised um, that y'all would take care of and respect it, and that's exactly what uh, what you did out there, you know. And if I had to grade this a scale of one to ten, ten being the best, I'll give y'all about fifteen. Wow! <laughs> Likewise, you were you were a pleasure to work with. You gotta talk to Shelly. You gotta see these pictures they got, dude. What do they have? What they, do have, they have. They have looks like with satellite images of a vehicle. What's that? It's it's just off West Sample Road. And what's uh, the Cypress Parkway or something? Okay. Yeah, there's an on-ramp, okay. the on-ramp yeah. pond, no guardrail, and it looks like on satellite earth, like there's a white vehicle inside it. You just heard it. We're continuing on for the evening. We have a lot of ground right. to cover. There's a lot more to go here. There's are thousands of bodies of water that have not been searched, and it's a process of elimination, a long process of elimination and relentlessness to accomplish the impossible makes it possible.